Hey guys, welcome to what I believe is the 12th Knowledge Highway HTML tutorial. Today we're gonna finally go over metadata, the most fun subject ever in the world. Actually, most people will probably skip over this. Uh, it's useful though, it's very useful in getting your search results higher on Google and all sorts. So, it's just good for any search engine related stuff, but also other things. So let's get started and write out our standard... Ooh, sorry. Uh, our standard template kind of thing that we've been using for the last little while. Gonna add a HTML element to tell the browser that I'm using HTML and a head element because we're gonna be using one of those. Don't you just love that I type the closing tag before I type the opening tag? Because I'm preemptive like that. Oh goodness. Yeah, it's kind of difficult to type with uh, having my microphone right in front of me and not being able to reach the keyboard because I have to reach around it. Anyway, now that I've gotten that little task out of the way, let's... I don't know, let's add like a little bit of... A little bit of something, just so there's something to look at, because there's really not much to see when you type in metadata. Anyway, um... Hi. Close tag. So I'm adding a heading element with... A heading one element with just the word hi in it. And the paragraph... A paragraph element, which I'll call hello world. Because that is fun and original. Gonna make that a capital H because I'm going all OCD up in this. So, there is our starting page. All of this which we already know. Let's go for it. Hi, hello world. Hello, HTML document. Let's add some metadata. So, what is metadata? What is this term that I've been tossing around? Well, it's, to give you the exact definition, it is data on data. To say that in more humane kind of terms, it would be information about data, and in this case we're talking about information on the, the HTML document. So, um, meta tags are used to provide information on page description, keywords, authors, dates modified, all that kind of stuff. So, it's, it's good stuff to have, and as I say, they, they are used mostly by the search engine, but occasionally by the browser in terms of instructions on what to do. Very few cases where that is the case, though. But I will go over a couple of them today, so, uh, yeah. Let's start off by adding our first meta tag. So type in the word meta, and then we'll close it. And that is a meta tag right there. <laughs> but it's kind of useless in this state because it really doesn't tell us anything. So what if we want to tell the browser exactly what character set we're going to be using in this document? Now, some of you will be asking, what is a character set? Well, that is basically uh, a list of all the different types of letters and symbols that will be used. Uh, in most cases, you will use the UTF one, which contains tons of different symbols. I believe it includes all sorts of languages as well. Uh, not all the fonts will have Chinese characters and Japanese characters and all that. Maybe they're the same? No, I don't know. <laughs> not so good on that side of language, but anyway. Um, yeah, so it basically tells the computer what, how many... Uh, what all the different symbols that are going to be used, or defines them. Uh, you can also use other uh, things other than UTF, like I think you can use ASCII actually, but... Not many browsers will support that, also ISO. Uh, don't worry if you don't know what any of this means, you could either Google it if you're questing for knowledge, or if you don't care, you don't have to care, because you're always going to be entering the same thing in here, like 99% of the time. So let's enter that thing in. So let's add an attribute called car set, which is basically what I've been talking about. This is where you set the uh, the character set to use. And uh, we're going to type in the one that I was just talking about, which is UTF-8. Now, this is the absolute standard. 
and I wouldn't deviate from using this. So whenever you're making your web page and you're thinking you're done and you're ready to add in all those final meta tags just so the browser can find you, you might want to throw this one in just for good measure, just in case someone's using some strange browser that doesn't know the character set or does not have that as default. So. Now that we're done with that useless meta tag <laughs> that should only be used for uh, reasons of completion and professionalism, let's talk about one that you might actually want to use. Oh gosh, my phone is ringing. Sorry. Picking up where we left off, we're about to do the meta keyword tag. Well, the meta tag with the keyword attribute. So let's go ahead and do that. Meta as our tag name and the first attribute is gonna be name. Now what does name do? That basically is the name of what we're going to apply content to or the it's like for example if you had a document this would be the name of the document and then we're gonna write inside of the document after we've given it its name. Uh, the name for keywords uh, as would be expected is keywords. So let's type keywords as the attribute between the two quotation marks. Now this, when the browser sees this, or the, in fact, no, it's more likely going to be the search engine. When the search engine sees this, it's like, oh wow, all these keywords that they have listed must be what this website's about. It must represent the main list of things that this website covers. So, how do we put those tags in? Or um, rather, keywords? Well, we use another attribute called content. Now I'm going to set that equal to in between quotation marks and then you can just list whatever keywords you want your website to have. So for example, if you had a website about games, you might type in games. And you might type in PlayStation, oops, station, or Xbox, or Nintendo. All those things may go as keywords. So just whatever relates to your website or the web page that you are creating would go in there. Why did I delete that? We may as well leave that up there. So let's save that and we should see no changes because these are this is meta information. This is stuff that goes in the header that does not appear in towards the user. But if we right click and go to view page source if you're using Firefox, you can see that there is in fact it's still there and if, for example, Google, uh, and if you know how Google works, basically, uh, quick summary, um, it has these little things uh, called, I think it's called spiders is what they call them, but they're basically, it's a little program that goes through all the web pages that it can get its little hands on via links. Um, it goes through them all looking for these types of lines and when it sees one it's like oh so this is games playstation xbox and nintendo are all associated with this web page so it updates its inner database with those tags so you are then telling google that that's that's what you want and when someone searches for nintendo you're more likely to appear higher up on the google search results or whatever search you're using, Bing or whatever. Um, the thing is, uh, you're not going to see an immediate result if this does happen. If you put these in and you're like, why is Google not like updating? Why is it not suddenly, why am I not the one that's number one for Nintendo? My, I've got the tag in there. Well, two things. Uh, first of all, it takes a while to update. And also, there are going to be th hundreds of thousands of websites with Nintendo in there and also the keywords is only a, a very small aspect to their overall algorithm I believe but it's good to have in there nonetheless it might get you up a couple of places um, so let's go over some similar uh, kind of things I guess so let's add another a similar meta tags so uh, oh yeah, as I was saying with the analogy, the name is like the name of the document, so keywords and the content is whatever goes inside it, uh, using that analogy. <laughs> so let's make another meta tag. 
And let's type name equals uh, description. That's another one that is description. Oh my goodness. This is another one that is uh, commonly used in websites. And it is used to describe the contents of the website. Oh, wow. That was completely unexpected, I know. Basically, when you search for it in Google, again, we're just going to talk about Google, because Google is obviously my favorite website, considering how often I reference it. <laughs> Maybe not my favorite, but anyway. Uh, you'll see under the name of your website, where it comes up with the result, it'll have like a name, and then it will have a description. Whatever description you enter in here will like most likely appear as the description on Google as well or whatever search engine. Uh, I think if you don't put in a, a description, then it will just quote a bit of your website or something. I, I can't remember entirely. But in this example, we would say, loads of fun information, uh, formation about games and such. And then that would be the description on Google. Yay! So, a couple other ones. Meta name equals, and we're gonna set the name attribute equal to author this time around. And then let's type in content as another attribute, and this time I'm gonna type in Jules Reed, because that's my name! Yay! Uh, so, that's, that's another one. That one's self explanatory, that just sets the name of the person. Now there are a few other ones like this, there's quite a few different names that you can enter other than just keywords, description, and author. Uh, but I'm not gonna go over all of them because there's an endless supply and I don't know all of them <laughs> because this is one of those things that you generally look up when you need it. You'll find out what different meta tags you can put in to make it more obvious what your website's about. Um, so that's going to do it for that section. Let's now go over one last thing on meta tags that I'm going to teach you. Meta tags are pretty extensive. There's more to them than just this, but not much more than this. So this is just about everything. Most other things are either redundant at this point or you just wouldn't generally use them. Anyway. Final thing that I'm going to teach you. So, I'm not open another meta tag. Yeah, you can get really full up with meta tags really quickly by using them. Uh, this time, I'm going to add an attribute called HTTP equiv. And then I'm going to set that equal to refresh. So, an attribute equal to, uh, in quotation marks, refresh. Uh, now I'm going to add another attribute to that, and I'm, it's going to be called content, as we've been using so far. And as you know, the content is where you specify what any information relating to that tag, once you've named what it's about. In this case, we're talking about how often the page should refresh. Uh, so let's tell it some information about that. How often should our page refresh? Now this is done in seconds, so to make this easy to see, I'm going to set this to two seconds. So that's basically it. Uh, I'm going to talk about that again because I kind of rushed over that and didn't make much sense of it. So we've opened a meta tag and we've given it, given it the attribute HTTP dash equiv equals refresh. Uh, now that just means that's telling the browser, okay, uh, I have this instruction for you, it's that you should refresh, that this page wants you to refresh. And then in the content we're saying how often it should refresh, and this is in seconds again. Uh, I've done two seconds, and this should work. Um, HTTP equiv dash equiv can be used for a couple of things. Um, but we'll go over another one in a minute. There's a few others that are, again, redundant at this point, so I'm not going to talk about them. So, let's go, and hopefully it will refresh. There you go. Okay, so this is going to be very difficult to see, but every so often, every two seconds it should be, you'll see this flicker. You might not even see it on the capture because it's loading so fast. This would be much more obvious on a real web page. Also, you can see this flicker to a cross. Look very carefully. 
and you might see it. This is far more obvious on a web page, uh, on a web server where it actually has to load more than just a bit of text as well. But take my word for it, it is refreshing over and over and over again. So, one final last thing, which is basically an amalgamation of a couple of meta tags, which would be... Well, actually, add something else. Uh, I think you would generally put this above everything else. Let's replace... Actually, that's not... That'll just confuse you further. But this tag is going to make this tag kind of redundant. The character set one, because we're going to set the character set in this one. Um, it's the same attribute, so you could really just do this. I'm basically just trying to show you that you can do two things in one. So I'm going to add another meta tag, and I'm going to take HTTP dash equiv equiv equals and as the for the attribute I'm gonna type content dash type now we're gonna add another attribute called content as we have been using before and here I'm gonna type text slash HTML now this looks uh, an awful light lot like um, what we have seen before with the whole linking deal. Well, it's the same thing. It's just basically telling the browser that all this web page is HTML code. It's kind of like another thing on top of doc type. Uh, I think doc type really is more about the version of HTML, whereas this is just telling it straight up that this document is HTML. There are not many cases where this would actually be important, but again, as I said before, it's good for compatibility reasons and just for professionalism to include things like this. However, do not feel that you have to. Um, so there's one other thing that we can do in here, as I mentioned earlier, we could set the character set uh, to something as well. And the way that we do this is by uh, adding a semicolon onto the end of what we've already got in the content attribute and typing car set equals and then no quotation marks this time, make sure you do not put quotation marks and type UTF dash eight. Now, we've just, this is kind of a complicated, needlessly complicated line, uh, but I thought I'd throw it in there nonetheless. If you don't understand this, feel free just to not bother with this and just do it in two lines like we've already done. But by adding this, you no longer need this. So, it's, it's nice to do it in one line, but sometimes for readability, you will do this over two. Uh, but yeah, all this does is tells, well, the semicolon tells the browser, okay, I'm, uh, I'm finished with this instruction, which is basically tell the browser that this is a HTML file. And now I want to also say that this, con this uh, web page has the character set of UTF-8. So, you've said two things in one statement. Incredible. Okay, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Uh, sorry I had to cut in the middle. Um, it's just how things go sometimes. So, the only thing that I can think of that we really have to do now is just forms. So, let's, that's what I'll be doing next time. Okay, that's going to do it for this time, guys. Thanks for watching, and see you next